Welcome back to The Breakfast. A citizens-led movement, Fix Politics, has launched the School of Politics, Policy and Governance. It's called SPPG to enhance the leadership performance in Africa by training young Nigerians. The launch, of course, held virtually yesterday and the program would commence on March the 1st, 2021. This next report has the details. The Fix Policy Initiative has designed an unconventional school. Their aim is to change the structure of political leadership in Nigeria by educating present and future leaders to truly listen and serve as chair of the advisory board of the School of Politics, Policy and Governance, SPPG, Obiageli Ezekwesili explains. The School of Politics, Policy and Governance will be admitting every six months some 500 people that will be given this program of seven thematic areas with more than 52 topics of courses that enable that would enable them to become competent, ethical, and capable leaders. We have designed courses basically that speak to the problems of development in Nigeria and Africa. The courses will be taught by renowned national and international leaders and academic experts, including organizations like the Hertie School of Governance Germany, Lagos Business School and Nexford University. We have a situation where anyone can get up and say, I'm running for office. They may not have a track record of execution. They may not have a track record of, of serving anywhere and they want to run for office. We, our desire is to bridge the gap. We want them to run, but we want them to run with understanding. We want them to run with knowledge. We're trying to bring a paradigm where quality people are the people that run for office on our continent. And so this is the leadership preparation system that we're innovating in, in, in Africa. At the end of the course, Participants would implement lessons learned and execute projects that solve problems in their communities. There's a lot of attention to the centre and we have forgotten what is happening at the community level. And that is why our students will be coming from the community and they would also be giving back to the community through different dimensions of capstone community projects. Fix Politics would grant a full scholarship to the first 500 cohorts in the programme. And by December 2023, they aim to have trained 3,000 youths who would constitute Africa's new leadership class and improve public trust, reduce corruption and form sound economic and social policies. And uh, we now have joining us the acting CEO, School of Politics, Policy and Governance, Alero Ayida Otobo. Good morning, Ma. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can now. Thanks Loud for joining and us. Good morning to you. Okay, lovely. Thank you for inviting me. Always. I, I want to start by asking uh, for everyone who's you know new to this or hearing this for the first time, uh, the selection of people who make up the board and panelists at the SPPG. Uh, what went into consideration before putting these uh, names together? Um, let, let's start with that. Putting the name of poli of the politics, policy, and governance together. Or no, no, the, the persons who who have, who make up the board, um, you know, of uh, the who SPPG. Make up the board. Yes. Ah, excellent question. You want to know the faces behind? Yes. Very interesting. You know, the journey started by Obia Sekwisili going on a journey of um, finding out and investigating. Why do we suffer the problems that we have in not just Nigeria, but Africa? So she carried out about six months of research. And that research threw up evidence of what the problems are. Then she invited about 25 of us to come to Germany, Berlin, Germany. And we spent about 24 hours listening to her and various other professors and they were able to identify what the solutions will be to the problems that we face in Nigeria and in Africa. From the 25 of us that listened, we then had our first conference in February, 2020. 
And at that conference, we're about 300 in number. From that conference, we are now about 125 leaders, leaders of character, competence, capacity, people who have served, people who are professionals, people who have identified the issues and they're they've taken a decision that we want to solve the problem. Out of these 125 of us, about seven, eight of us are on the advisory board. So it's people that were bought into the vision and the mission of PIX politics. All right. So many of us have served, like I've served with for about four ministers. And one of the things I notice is that there's a difference between a minister that understands the issues and understands the solution and one that comes in and doesn't have a clue as to what to do and how to do it. So the question that arises in our mind is why the difference? Who knows what to do and who doesn't? And it's knowledge, knowledge gap, understanding gap. And the advisory board of speaks politics and the School of Politics, Policy and Governance are made up of people who want to fix the problem of leadership in Nigeria and in Africa. All right. All so right, so let's... people who understand the issues and okay. they come on board and they join hands and we're solving the problems together. Hmm. Let's now talk about that knowledge gap. You know, after that conference, you know, the research that was carried out, what was discovered to be missing in the practice of politics and governance as well as leadership in Nigeria? <sighs> That's a big question. And I will try and say it in very few words. The knowledge gap showed that a lot of our politicians that serve, like I said yesterday at the media launch, many have the heart to serve, but lack the understanding and the knowledge. What's the knowledge gap? How does the economy work? What are the parameters that govern economic growth and bring prosperity to a developing nation? What are the fundamentals of good governance and building institutions? How do we understand how public leadership and innovation works together? Because if you're a public servant and you're not 21st century compliant, how are you going to serve in the 21st century? And then we also find that there are gaps in understanding how does a democrat, democratic um, country, how does it work? How do you engage with, the, with those that you are meant to serve and govern? We find that many do not understand that it's about servant leadership. It's not about lording over those that you call to serve. It's about understanding inclusive growth and shared prosperity. It's about understanding how do you manage natural resources? All the things I'm mentioning are the things that we're going to teach in our school of politics, policy, and governance. We're going to be able to highlight the theory and practice of disruption. Agricultural productivity, how do you improve it? Right. How do you understand the innovations that need to take place? How do you even understand the, the political science and public policy and policy formulation? Okay. Um, All this and more. Yeah. is what we want to be able to talk about and teach. I want to jump That's in the here. Knowledge so, that we have at the moment. Some of the things that you've mentioned, um, I believe, are things that normally um, people should be able to learn while going through our education system. Um, yes. From primary, secondary, and to, of course, to universities. Um, but it doesn't, from what you're saying, it doesn't seem like we have a lot of those things, um, you know, that are impacted in, in students by the time they finally graduate. And the people who eventually make it into um, um, public office, you know, lack a lot of this knowledge from what you've described. Um, so I want you to, first of all, address that, our education system, and what it lacks with regards building up persons who can take over these positions um, in the future. And then second, it speaks of disruptive thinking um, and, um, you know, what you hope to achieve with that. But can you have disruptive thinking and, you know, this drive with the same system that we run in Nigeria today. People would argue that no matter how brilliant you are, you can't function in this system. Hmm. Okay, let me start with your first. And I could go on forever, but I'll keep it short <laughs> and I'll tell you why. All right. I've been, I've been working in banking for like 14 years before I 
pivoted into the into the public sector. And you remember I said I served four ministers. Yeah. Guess what? They were ministers of education. Mm. So I was bang in the ministry, right in the center of Ministry of Education and over 21 parallel status. And within the first three months of being there, I realized why as a nation, we had the problems and the challenges that we have. Our educational system is broken. At that time, and this is more than, more than a decade ago, we were in a crisis in education. And the truth is we're still in a crisis. Our children are not learning. Why are children not learning? Because our teachers are not qualified. And I'm not, it's a general statement, but I want to qualify it by saying there are some excellent teachers in the system, but we don't want them to be the minority. We want excellent teachers to be the majority. So one of the key issues is that our, because our educational system is dysfunctional, you can have a, 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 a student leaving primary school and they cannot read or write. And we have enough evidence. There's Learn Nigeria that has done a lot of work over the last three years that demonstrate that our children still cannot read or write. So we have to fix our education. All right. And that is why we shouldn't be surprised that our leaders are not as knowledgeable and as, as, and as, as, as skilled as they should be in managing the economy and in managing the nation. It's not something that I would like to say that it's not their fault, but also we have a responsibility to empower ourselves. Hmm. So the education system is broken. Now, and there's, a, and there's a, uh, a team called the Education Reform and Innovation Team that I'm part of, and we're trying to do something about All it. Right. Quick, quickly but also talk about... Good. Yeah, so the, that's, that's the, the first answer. Yeah, okay. People are working, and people are trying to do something about it. Now, let me pivot to the second question. And that second question was, you were asking me about... Now you're going to have to remind me because well, I was asking like, about you know a a you know a situation where you have the most brilliant minds in a flawed system. Yes, that is now I'll tell you. Yes, disruptive. How do you can have the most brilliant mind, but the system forces you to comply with inefficiency and and mediocrity? So how do we fix that? And I think the key is 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 that it's a it's a change in our curriculum. If we're going to go back to education. And our curriculum has to begin to focus on character education. Our curriculum needs to focus on innovative thinking. Then for those that are already adults, it's forming a critical mass. And that's why I'm, I'm glad that in the presentation, we noted that one part of our output is 3,000 leaders by 2023, but it's not about 2023, it's not about 2027. It's about building a critical mass of people that have character, competence and capacity in our nation. And we can only do that by deliberately and intentionally building people and pushing them out into the system over a period of time. So that over 10 years, the norm will be what we see now as the exception. Mm. I hope I've made sense. Yes, indeed. And it's about it's just, it's just rolling up our sleeves and working hard. Rolling up our sleeves and taking the decision that we, enough is enough. All right. Um, and you know what? It's about staying power. I could go on and on. Um, you know what? You, but you understand what I'm trying yes, to say. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And yeah. I'd like to quickly ask yeah. you, it, it's sad that we're in a country where lots of our politicians face certificate scandals from as basic as their work, certificate to university, to NYC and all of that. So for this school of politics, policy and governance, would this be, do you see this in future being a prerequisite to run for public office or maybe an advantage to, you know, emerging uh, politicians or aspiring leaders? I would say, can I start by telling you that we are probably one of the few countries in the world that does not vet the individuals that run for office? So the answer, short answer to your question is that yes. We would like to see that those who go through the S SPPG will be at an advantage because they have the knowledge and the, they now have the, the qualities of, of, of running for office and for serving well. And, and I would also like to sort of like inform you that if you take the United Kingdom, 
You can't wake up and say you want to be a member of parliament and run for office. You, a committee is going to vet you and confirm and affirm that you, you are prepared and that you're ready. And if they say no, you now have to go through a preparatory period where you now get, get equipped and, and, and close the gap that that committee identified. But Nigeria, we don't have that yet. So our hope is that SPPG and the qualification will be not just an advantage, but one day will be a prerequisite. All right. One Finally, um, I want you to important. quickly speak um, and share your thoughts on the organization and the structure and the mindset of those pe persons who organized the NSAS protest. Um, did do you, you know, see that energy and that level of organization, you know, as something that was exciting or, you know, you know, did you see it as just another incident in Nigeria? Though, from what you're trying to build, uh, did you see any form of leadership, you know, in that, that, you know, maybe you know, you're you happy about? NSARS is one of those destiny-defining moments for any nation. Something shifted in our nation with NSARS. But that shift started from October 1st, when we turned 60. If you are perceptive, you will know that something changed on that day. That October 1st was not the usual October 1st. There were many citizens-led initiatives that were announced, that were celebrated on that day. So what we then saw with NSARS movement was a continuation of something that had started way before NSARS. And NSARS is something that should be celebrated because it shows that the next generation is ready to, to take leadership reins. The next generation understands what the issues are and what the problems are, and they are willing to solve it. And I just, I believe that what has started, it may, it may, it may, it may change its complexion or its complexity, but it has come to stay. And I dare say that even initiatives like fixed politics and other su such like initiatives are all going to strengthen the NSARS movement. Uh, I salute and I celebrate every single um, courageous youth that took that risk and died for us. Mm. I salute them and I commend them. And I believe that their death will not be in vain. I really do believe it. Amen. I believe that Nigeria has changed forever. Amen. Thank you very much, Ma Alero Aida Otobo, the Acting CEO School of Politics, Policy and Governance, uh, for speaking with us today. And we do hope, you know, like you shared the vision yesterday at the media launch, that this program eventually becomes something that, you know, the whole of Africa and, you know, leaders around the African continent can key in to benefit and become the leaders, the exact types that we need to take our, our country or Africa, our, our continent to the place where it belongs in the Committee of Nations. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great weekend uh, once again. You too. Enjoy. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, uh, I love, totally love that conversation. And, me too. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, unfortunately, and it's, it's the reason I asked, you know, the question that I asked about the education system. These are things that you would expect would be thought. Yes. You know, we'll be taught rather, um, you know, when you're journeying through school. This should be people, what governments in school yeah, should be all about. study political science, you know, you and know, come out and, and know nothing science, about politics. Yes. You know, study political science and eventually become, you know, a militant or, um, uh, you know, a political thug. I don't know if they teach thug in political science. <laughs> and I think our curriculum really should be updated, you know, to, to keep up with the times. And I'm looking forward to, you know, schools like the, you know, the School of Politics, Policy yeah, and PPG. Governance, partnering with universities to teach, you know, students of political science, you know, these things. So when they're coming out of school, they're ready to run for governance, for office. They're ready to begin to implement, you know, things to change their community. And that's one thing I love about this program. They say at the end of the program, just like when you do a project in school, you would go back to your community and yes. solve a problem there. And I that, think that that that's what we really need, project. service. Yes, we really need that, service. That should be like a final year project, um, you know, and um, there's, there's some level of grooming that I see that, you know, politicians from, you know, other climes have before they eventually take office. You know, science, your education, your degree, certification. There's also some level of grooming that, you know, I believe that you should pass through so you um, understand what it means to hold a seat that you're, you're seeking for. 
Um, we don't have a lot of that here, unfortunately, and mm -hmm. maybe that's why. Um, and, but one thing that I feel like we, you know, we didn't get to you know, address or she didn't get to address was when I talked about disrupt disruptive thinking, you know, the great minds, but we have a system that just doesn't work. Um, if we are still talking, looking for true federalism and um, you know, still have an electoral process that is flawed, still have a political class that is flawed, still have a judiciary that has its issues, then it's almost, almost you know, impossible to have you know, a change when you have you know, great minds in those offices. But it's a continued conversation. Um, we're moving on uh, to talk about the World Bank that has decided to give about $5 billion to 11 African countries. How effective will this be? What it, you know, would it be used for? And um, you know, it would be having an extensive conversation with two persons right after this short break. Stay with us. <laughs> 